Let me ask you something. How intelligent do you have to be to take a food order? Sometimes your restaurant visit doesn't always go as planned. Ever wonder why? Well, to find out if you're a terrible customer, here are 10 reasons why your server hates you. Can I get you started with drinks? Just water would be great. Oh my god, I love water. Me too! Walk in right before closing. I don't have anything, we're closing. Everyone who has ever worked at a restaurant knows this is one of the worst things a customer could ever do. Walking into a restaurant that's about to close is the perfect way to ensure you will be hated by just about everybody inside. Yes, technically, if it closes at 8 and you walk in at 7.55, it is still open and they still need to serve you. However, don't expect any of it to be done out of the goodness of their hearts. I hate this job! Their shift has now been extended for at least an hour. The bussers will despise you because they can't leave until you do. The cooks will be fuming since the kitchen is essentially closed, the grill has been scrubbed, the cutlery cleaned, and everything was wrapped up for the night. You won't be your server's favorite customer of the night either. What can you do to avoid this unfortunate situation? Since everybody's got to eat, consider the time and order promptly, keeping in mind which dishes are easiest to whip up at this hour. Perhaps even ask if there are any late night selections that are meant for quick service. Another thing you can do is to sit at the bar, which is usually open for an hour or so more, or simply ask for your meal to go. This will probably only set the staff back a couple of minutes and you can still have a delicious meal. Yeah, yeah, can we get the check? You don't tip. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. Ah, yes, the bane of everyone's existence. People who won't or simply don't know how to tip properly. Tipping, depending on where you live, can be subjective. For example, in Europe, tipping culture isn't as strict and mandated as it is in America. In fact, in France, anything between 5 and 10% is considered generous, since there is already a 15% service charge applied to the check. Over here, though, things are a little bit different. Not only does tipping let your server know that you've enjoyed their service, but it also helps make their salary. Most waiters receive base pay and depend almost entirely on tips to make ends meet. What's your plan here? I'm encouraging you to leave $12. This is because the service fee isn't included in the price, so if you don't tip them, they don't get paid for serving you. So when a table, especially a large one, decides not to leave any tip, it quickly becomes a very hated party at the restaurant. Now, maybe they don't know how they're supposed to tip because they're tourists, but a lot of times it's out of spite. Some people will leave hateful notes on the table explaining why they didn't tip, like, we don't believe in tipping, or didn't like the food, which are never welcome. The government also taxes servers according to what they assume you are making in tips, and let's not forget the fact that they pool their earnings, splitting it with the rest of the staff like bussers and hosts. So really, if you can't afford to tip, you can't afford to eat out. Stay at home. Taking your sweet time. Could you give us just a minute, please? Of course. No one should feel rushed when going out to eat. Obviously, if you wanted fast dining, you would have picked a fast food place and not a sit-down restaurant. But going to a full-service restaurant doesn't mean you can take all the time in the world, either. As you know, time is money, and that goes for the server waiting on your table as well. Taking too long to order can be frustrating for them, especially on a busy night. If you constantly ignore the server's attempts to get your order, there is a high chance you're already getting on their nerves. There you go. If you want to order something else, tell me. I'll get it for you. What's even worse than that? Saying you're ready to order when you're not. Not only are you wasting the server's time, but you're also wasting everyone else's. The same goes for people that linger too long after their checks are settled. Staying a bit to digest and figure out your next move is okay, but monopolizing a table for an hour after the last bite or sip was taken is pushing it. The time you spend at your table doing nothing takes another paying customer away from the server. You shouldn't overstay your welcome. Can I get you something else? A, a sandwich, something to eat? 
along with your fluffy. You're clueless. There's a hair in my soup, but I'll just eat around it. This one is a little trickier than the other reasons your server hates you. During an outing at the restaurant, there's a lot that can go wrong. Improperly cooked meats, mix-ups in the kitchen, off-tasting dishes, and the odd human error that can put a dent in your evening. Of course, servers are there to make your night enjoyable and need to know if something is out of place. But there are limitations to what they can control. Come on, I've suddenly lost my appetite. Oh, who's going to believe that? If your problem is caused by a mistake or misunderstanding, they will be able to help. But if it has to do with you being clueless and having different expectations than what's being offered, you're on your own. Before you order anything, it's important to understand the extent of what you're getting. Read the menu descriptions carefully, ask questions for clarification, or consider taking a recommendation from the server. If the meal you end up choosing doesn't meet your expectations, it's okay to be disappointed, but sending it back or demanding something else isn't always acceptable. Whether or not it's their fault, the server will most likely be blamed for the wasted food, so be mindful when ordering. Um, how's your Reuben? It's okay, but there is a lot of pus on it. I'll have that. Too many substitutions. Wow, look at these prices. Yeah. These are pretty cha-ching. There's always that one person who's never satisfied with the way things are on the menu. Changing the chicken for beef, replacing the green beans with asparagus, or substituting the salad for a plate of wings. At this point, it becomes a whole new meal. Sure, if you have allergies or specific dietary restrictions, asking for some substitutes is pretty standard, but there is only so much you can change on your plate before you start to upset the chef. And while they want to make you happy and meet your every need, it's not always up to your server. For instance, a lot of items are pre-mixed or marinated in advance, which makes it hard to accommodate your demands. No substitution. Other times, the chefs may simply refuse to make any adjustments to the plates, saying it could ruin the integrity of their dishes. Some demands can be reasonable, like asking for the sauce on the side, but requesting the vegetables be exchanged for extra chicken simply isn't. It can also be hard to add or subtract prices to a dish, meaning you could end up with a lot less food but paying the same amount. Another thing, nothing is free. You want to change your chips for sweet potato fries? Sure, no problem, but you'll have to pay the extra two bucks since the staff has no control over additional charges. That's unfair. It's incredibly unfair. Cranky kids. I hate Vietnam. Lily, honey, we don't hate. I hate Vietnam. No matter where you go, no one likes to be disturbed by screaming children. Whether it's on an airplane, a busy mall, or a peaceful Saturday night out at a restaurant. Obviously, sometimes kids can randomly get riled up for a second and be okay afterward. That's fine. But what's not fine is when the entire restaurant gets disturbed for the whole time. There are a lot of well-behaved and well-mannered kids out there, but there are also those who like to cause trouble. You know, the ones who scream, kick, throw things, and run around other tables with no intervention from the parents? That's the kind servers usually have a problem with. Allowing children to wander around the restaurant is unsafe for both them and the staff. I want to go home! What happens if a server trips over a kid and spills a tray of hot food on them? This goes hand in hand with children having manners towards restaurant staff. Being polite to servers doesn't only apply to adults. Letting children talk down to servers is not something that should be encouraged, and neither is forcing them to order for themselves when they're uncomfortable. If your kid is having a bad day, the best thing to do probably isn't bringing them to a restaurant full of people. Sorry, Mom. You're rude. Waitress. Dude. 
This one should really go without saying, and yet there are still a lot of people out there who are incredibly rude to their servers, most of the time for no valid reason at all. Sometimes, however, you might not even realize that you're being rude, and honestly, we can't tell which is worse. There is one thing everyone should remember before going to a restaurant, and that is servers are humans too. They have a life outside of their workplace, and they are allowed to make mistakes. Human being, you're a human being. You can just, just say. Yelling from the top of your lungs at your server because they forgot to refill your water isn't going to bring anything but awkwardness to the dining room and earn you a spot on their list of worst customers ever. Also, snapping your fingers or whistling isn't an acceptable way to get their attention either. Think about it, you probably wouldn't like anyone addressing you that way, so why do it to other people? Another way you can come across as rude is by making every single issue their fault. Blaming a server for something they have no control over is the best way to receive poor service. God, I hate this place. Acting like you know the owner. Do you mind? First person offended the owner. It's true that when you go to a place where you know the owner, it can come with a few advantages. At least if the owner is present and has the time to actually visit you at the table. Whether it's a free appetizer on the house, there can be a lot of positives. However, there's a difference between actually knowing the owner and pretending you do in order to get special treatment. Nothing annoys servers more than having to listen to someone say, but I know the owner. That's often a response people give when they're told they can't have something. Even if you do know the owner, it doesn't automatically entitle you to anything, and the servers especially do not owe you anything. This is my restaurant, and we'll serve the food that I want to serve. If the place is packed with a 45-minute wait and you forgot to make a reservation, saying the owner is your great uncle's cousin's brother won't make things go any faster, especially if it's not true. A lot of people continue to try this tried and usually failed technique technique to get themselves freebies, discounts, and several other possible advantages. If you do this, know you're on the server's no list. I'll never come back. You're cheap. How much is that? $14, Similar to how not tipping means you shouldn't be dining out, if you can't actually afford the prices on the menu, then you should eat somewhere else. We've all known someone who tries to bargain their way into reducing costs or getting a discount. These types of penny pushers really get on servers' nerves, including adults who order off the kids' menu, ask for multiple baskets of bread, or even fill their pockets with extra condiments. If I get it without the nuts and leeks and stuff, is it cheaper? Oh, and let's not forget people who ask for a bunch of lemons to make their own lemonade because they don't want to pay full price for it. Another thing that grinds your server's gears? When customers expect them to make a menu price lower if they leave something off the plate. Ordering the steak and fries special without the fries still costs the same, regardless of whether you want the whole dish or not. Trying to change set menu prices won't get very far in your money-saving journey, let alone into the good graces of your server. If you want to stay on your server's good side, stick with what's on the menu and save your bargaining for some place more appropriate, like the flea market. Your name goes in the book. What book? The Enemies of Magic book. Asking to prepare food you brought. In my own way, on my own terms. This one goes hand in hand with asking for too many substitutions and not being satisfied with what's offered on the menu. Whether you're a picky eater or on a special diet or simply because you don't like the food at the restaurant, some people think it's okay to bring their own food and ask the server to prepare it for them. This was especially common when the prepared foods diet craze began spreading and people were trying to stick to their menus as much as they could. Cancer, heart disease, drowning, all preventable with a vegan diet and a life jacket. 
Asking for the kitchen to warm up your Tupperware and put it on a plate is the same as bringing food in from another restaurant, which is obviously not okay. Thankfully, restaurants nowadays have implemented policies to prevent this kind of practice, but it still hasn't stopped people from trying. When you go to a restaurant, you're supposed to eat the food they serve. If you're not vibing with the menu, simply go somewhere else or ask your friends to take it to go and head to a park. Bringing your leftover plate from last night's supper or your gluten-free bread and rolls isn't being respectful of the server, but the same goes for the cooks in the kitchen. Unless you have bad allergies, it's best to stick to the menu or stay home. No one wants to smell your food all over the dining room. What? That, that smell? What's that smell? What smell? Looking for more? Just tap or click another video. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.